So Gino Oriema talked about Caitlin Clark again. This ought to be fun. Anyhow, he was a guest on a, a podcast, uh, Make a Difference with Phil Martelli, who obviously Phil Martelli also a, a coach, um, you know, longtime coach in, in college basketball. Anyhow, if I had Gino Oriema on, the first thing I would do is, well, maybe not the first thing because I'd want to get the pleasantries out of the way. And not just like railroad the guy. He is a legendary coach. Don't get me wrong. But I would eventually play back his Dan Patrick comments um, for him where he said that Clark didn't have the right skill set for the WNBA and that her fans were delusional for thinking she would come in and, and have this instant impact. You know, I'm paraphrasing and get his revised take on that um, because he was very wrong. And it's OK. Like sometimes we're very wrong. But. I get why that didn't happen on this latest thing because, you know, coaching fraternity and all that didn't want to call him out on his freezing ice cold polar bears toenail take. Um, Nonetheless, Gino talked about Caitlin Clark again and sort of gave some backhanded compliments. Like he talked about how she connects to the audience, which was good. He talked about how she's tough, uh, like Paige Beckers. He threw Paige in there um, as well. But he, he also, you know, let me play it for you. I, I want you to have the, the full context of the comments, too. So I'm going to start it a little earlier because they it was a longer discussion. And I don't want to take Gino out of context and be unfair. So he, here is the beginning of the conversation. The women's game. So if, if I think sometimes people get confused over the last 18 months, maybe over two years, that they think it was a rocket. That you all jumped on Caitlin Clark's back and went straight up, but you've been there at the beginning of the ride, so to speak. And it's an ascent. <clears throat> Where does the game grow from Caitlin to Paige, knowing that before Caitlin was Brianna and Diana and Sue and Rebecca and, and, and all of those, uh, Dawn Staley as a player, where does it go? Do, do, can it continue to climb and will it climb on the back of now Paige Beckers? Uh, yeah, there, there, I, I kind of liken it to, um, the, the college men's programs, players of the, late 60s, you know, early 70s, right around that time when I was in high school, where uh, there was a lot of really great basketball being played all over the country, but nobody knew about it. So if you lived in Philly, you knew that the schools in Philly, the big five, were the, were the best five schools in America because you had no idea that anybody else was any good because you never saw them. You know, then when I went and left to go to UVA, and I was in the ACC and I was like, <laughs> those people in Philly are out of their mind. <laughs> this, this is a whole different world, dude. You know, but as we were, as we were growing up, all we knew was in our backyard. We couldn't see anything. UCLA had all these great teams. And, you know, unless you were an avid fan, you didn't know. You didn't know those guys. You knew Lou Alcindor. That's it. You knew, uh, eventually you knew Bill Walt, but, um, there was a game played at the uh, Astrodome between Houston and um, and UCLA and 60,000 people, whatever it was, came to the game. And all of a sudden, everything changed. There were a lot of good players before that, but after that, it changed. And it changed more when, you know, uh, Magic and Burr came out of, out of uh, high school and played in college. And it changed again when Jordan came out. Um, and then the NBA did the exact same thing. There were a lot of great NBA players, but I tell people, they don't believe me. I said, listen, when I was growing up in Philly and the Sixers were playing the Celtics in the playoffs to see who was going to the finals, the game was on tape delay the next day. All right. So you couldn't even watch the game live. All right. So there were a lot of great players and no one saw them play. But after Bird and Magic and then Jordan, the game took off. The women's game now is exactly the same way. There were so many great players that people have never seen. And people bitch and moan about, well, why didn't they pay more attention back then? 
Because they didn't. Like, it's a very simple answer. Because they didn't. You know, and, and now they do. So, you know, the point is, where, where are we going next? And and if we think that, uh, you know, one kid, you know, one Caitlin Clark is going to be enough to to take this where it needs to go, it's not. Or one page Beckers, it's not. What they do is they show you the way. They show you what's possible. And then the people that run the operation have to now capitalize on it. And then the younger generation, the high school people, have to prepare these kids so that when they get to college, we have something good to work with. And then we send them up to the WNBA. And then they have something good to work with. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So it still comes back to uh, those of us that are in charge of the game. Are we making the game better every day? Are we making our players better every day? And are we preparing them? You know, and in so many more ways than just scoring points. I think one of the things that makes Caitlin Clark, you know, who she is, is the way she is with people. You know, she connects with people and people connect with her. Now, she talks a lot of shit on the court. <laughs> all right. Believe me. You know, when people talk about in WNBA, why are these people beating up Caitlin Clark? Because she talks a lot of shit on the court. <laughs> all right. That's what makes her good. So she's not like this, uh, you know, angel walking around there and everybody else is beating her up. No. Nah. She, she's got a lot to say. She's a lot like Paige. Those guys have a lot to say. They just do it subtly, and they're tough. And so, you know, we need more of that. And we, 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 need, more, we need more great games. We need more, more uh, better games. We need, uh, we need more rules modifications. So that was the basic gist of Gino Oriema's comments. So I wanted to make sure I didn't take anything he said out of context there. Um, let me say, first of all, that I never had an issue with physicality with Caitlin Clark in the, the WNBA. Now he's kind of going out of his way to, you know, first he's like saying she connects to people and he could have left it at that, I guess. But he, he almost goes on to put the, you know, reverse some of that discourse, try to put it um, in others' laps because of Caitlin Clark's trash talk. But I never thought, you know, there was a couple plays that should have been officiated differently. My issue is more the lack of honesty in promoting and and giving Caitlin Clark her credit now. Because even the, the, the initial question in that interview was basically like, oh, you, people think it's a rocket ship and really it's been an ascension. Just because you've all been around doesn't mean everybody else has been around. And, and I credit Gino for saying that. He said they weren't paying attention. Now, that doesn't mean there wasn't incremental growth. I've said that a, a billion times. There's incremental growth. But to act like the explosive growth didn't just happen is naive. It's naive. And then to, you know, say that about Caitlin and then have to go out of your way to say something else and insert page into the conversation is something too. And, you know, we know that Clark did not go to UConn, um, wound up going to Iowa, wound up standing on her own too without being in one of those powerhouse programs. And you know, if you want some more evidence of how those powerhouse programs can help you, I, I saw this floating around today freshman of the year candidates look at the numbers Clark clearly had the best freshman season but Paige Beckers I believe was the national player of the year and they tied for freshman of the year or something like that so that goes along those lines of like her not being a UConn girl which could influence uh Gino Oriema's perspective a little bit um I'm still waiting for somebody to ask him uh, about what he said in the past though you know what does he think about her actual game because that's that's what she did and proved. That's why she had the freshman year that I just showed you. That's why she had the rookie year that we've talked about so much. So all this other stuff, um, you know, is is noise in a sense, and we're not discussing the essence. And to to ignore, you know, her influence and say, oh, you know, page two or the, the past or whatever. Again, Gino didn't really do that, but he did throw her in there. And he did say, you know, Caitlin talks trash. That's why she got beat up. And I, I get he's trying to protect, I suppose, the history of the game and and those the, the, the pioneers so they don't get disrespected and everything and, and the, the people that were already there. And, and part of that is he's been an institution there. But I don't know. I, I feel like he could be a little bit more straightforward in just giving Caitlin Clark credit. A lot of people could. 